Okay guys, today we're going to play with this little guy right here. This is a spin indexer. It has a fixed plate on the front with 36 holes on it. And it has 10 holes in the back for this particular little guy right here. This is the locking pin so that when you pull this out, and it does come all the way out, it's supposed to. This is a brake or drag or a lock, whatever you want to call it. And as you spin this, the tube will spin as well. If you already have one of these and you've noticed an end-to-end -end issue if you're trying to grind something and it's bumping into the wheel, this little collar right here, loosen this collar up and tap it forward and tighten it back down. You want a nice easy turning on this but you don't want it to be super tight and you certainly don't want it in and out. Now you use a spin indexer for a variety of things. You can use it on a grinder or on a mill but when you use it on a grinder and a mill the limitations of each machine are a little bit different. On a grinder you use this stationary depending on you know which index position you have it in for grinding hex brooches, square brooches, flats, D shafts, whatever and you can also use it uh, in a full spin to, to grind down an OD of a part that you're working with of course. You do not want to do that on a mill because the cutter will grab the part and it will jerk this thing out of your hand. Trust me, I've seen it done. Now the way these work, so 5C collet. 5C collet goes right in there. Crank it down, put your part in, and depending on which number you select, let's see if we can zoom in on that, maintain focus. Nope, refocus. Now the way that you use this, there's an index mark between the four and the five on the top Excuse me, that's between the five, yeah, the four and the five, right there. Now, it's just for, for visual. These numbers here, the 27, 28, 25, 31, those are degrees, okay? And it is 10 minutes between degree. So that's 30, or excuse me, that's 10 degrees, okay? 300 degrees, 310, 320, 30, 40, 350, and back to zero for 360. Now, in the zero position here, this pin should go in. And it does. So it locks the whole unit out. It will not move in the zero position. Now, if you want a one degree, you have to put this guy. It's hard to do that without blocking out the camera. In the number one. And as you turn this clockwise, just wait for it to drop in all the way around. Let's move it up to four. Let's move it up to five. So we'll get that line right there to line up with the index mark. There's a better angle. Even with gentle pressure on it, it's not going to find anything until it gets to that hole. Now it's in. Okay. When you get all the way around to 10, you have to go back to zero. Simple. And that's about as easy as it gets. So if you can't divide the angle that you want or the number of facets or flats or whatever into 360 evenly, you may be out of luck because I have never figured out a way to get half degree increments out of this without using a fixtured subplate. And that's a story for a whole nother day. I'm going to pop this up on the mill. We're going to go through two setups with this guy. And we're going to make something fun just to show you how it can be done and thinking outside the box. And this particular indexer is made by the same people that make the rotary table I have, phase two. So I have a lot of phase two stuff. I like it not compensated to say that I just like their equipment and speaking of rotary tables had to throw this one out there we now have a alignment pin offering with a 500 shank on it now this is a couple dollars more expensive than the straight shank because these are pulled from stock and modified and that's a secondary operation so if you have a mini mill if you have a machine that's only got a 500 capacity oh there you go it's on the website take a look all right, let's put this up in the machine, clamp it down, make something cool. Hey, Dale Terry, make something cool. Okay, guys, in order to prepare the blank for this little demonstration I'm going to do, I'm going to turn a 60-degree cone on the end of this. The compound is set at 30 degrees, so it's going to be a 60-degree included angle. Now, one school of thought for a setup like this, you will notice that my compound is set for an internal angle. Well, that is correct, it is. That's because I'm going to use a boring bar and run this machine in reverse to cut the taper on the nose of this brass part. Now, here's just something to think about. 
if you're turning a tapered plug and a tapered receiver feature that need to work together I'm going to say that the most accurate way to do that is to use a boring bar on both of them. Use the same tool. Do not use a second tool. Well, I mean, you can if you're exactly sure that the center lines are perfectly matched, but you are not going to get a better center line match than using the same tool for both features. So I'm going to run this machine in reverse. We're going to knock some chips off of this thing real quick, and then we're going to take it over, put it in a spin indexer, and have some fun. Let's refocus. That would be fun. Boom. Here we go. Okay, let's put it in the mill and chop it up. Okay, after prepping the blank and the lathe, we are loaded up in the machine. And this is a what I call a meatball setup. A couple of one, two, three blocks clamped in my vise on parallels. And this jig is clamped to the top of those. Now, the ideal way to do this would be to mount it to this guy right here. Strap it down. If you're going to do any heavy milling, I would not recommend using clamps, although these can't twist clamps are pretty strong. Machine forces being what they are, these could probably let go, so I would recommend a much stronger toe clamp. Even squeeze it into vise. Move the whole vise to a 30 degree angle. Okay, we are going to do 12 cuts on the face of this. Let me reposition the camera so we get a good look at what's going on and get after it. I am going to index this spin indexer 12 times at 30 degrees. So I'm going to stay in the zero position on my back dial and I'm just going to hit the 30, the 60, the 90, all the way around. And let's see what happens to the face of this part. It's brass, 7 8 diameter. It's a two flute, three eighths diameter carbide end mill. For all of you guys in the UK, that's about uh, 20 millimeter stock, 10 millimeter cutter. That's pretty cool. I like the way that looks. I mean, just for having fun, that's I refocus so you can get a real good look at that. And that is kind of hard to see under reflection, but we have 12 equal flats on that, 30 degrees apart. And we're going to take this setup, break the setup down. This particular spin indicator has parallel sides, 
and one ground face in the front. You can never count on these things to have four machine sides because this back is still a rough casting. It's all that powder coat. I mean, it looks good, but it'd be nice if it had four equal sides. We're going to take it out of the vise, remove those one, two, three blocks, reset this at a different angle, and cut another set of series of facets on that. So stay tuned. Part's been repositioned in the vise. That is ugly if ever I saw it, but there's a pretty good bite on that. 45 degrees, we are nose down. I'm going to use a fly cutter because the top of the spin indexer gets pretty close to the spindle. So I needed some decent projection to make that even possible. So let's throw some chips at the camera, put another 12 facets on there, and then I'm going to show you exactly what a one-way part means because that's what this is going to end up being. Finish it, and it's not going back in the machine. So here we go. Okay, after the two setups, this is what we have. Catches the light real nice. Gonna put this in the lathe, part it off just below the blend points here. Clean up the face and show you what a one-way part looks like. Parting operation. I am going to grab a hold of this just before it flies off. I would hate to damage any of those corners. In the interest of keeping my fingers and keeping you happy, I'll run it down to the point where I can just twist it and break it off. There you go. All right, let's clean it up, take a look. Okay, there you go. That is a perfect example of a one-way part. This will not go back into the process that produced it, naturally because it was parted off and finished out at the end. This is just one of many examples of what you can do with a spin indexer. If you were to make a wheel with a hole pattern in the face of it or around the perimeter of it, like a spoke bicycle wheel, a hub, a hex nut, a square, you know, any variety of uh, projects can be achieved. And stupid stuff like this, this is just fun to knock out once in a while. I'll have this laying around for a while. And remember that I shot it for a video. Anyway, there you go, making diamonds on the mill piece of cake. It's just a matter of which way you approach it. Sometimes uh, it helps to look at it from a little bit different light. And there you go. Neat little project. Now I need to make a ring for it and give it to my wife. <laughs> Thanks for watching guys. Very much appreciated.